couple key opportunities that were missed early in the third quarter. I thought we played a very good first first half, um, but uh, didn't make enough plays in the third quarter, and then obviously um, just kind of ran out of gas in the in the fourth quarter. But uh, I thought those kids fought and they battled. Um, but and. Uh, there's a there's a there's a bright future. I'm excited because there's a lot of guys in that room that I thought had really good games that are sophomores and and freshmen and young players. Um, we got to continue to develop them and uh, we got to continue to recruit, which is going good right now. But uh, the development of the locker room is a big big part um, of year two here coming up. Don, you want to go ahead and start us off? I think it's uh, I think it's developing uh, everything off the field from player-led leadership and player accountability. Um, yeah, we've got to get in the weight room. We've got to get bigger. We've got to get stronger. Um, I don't. I think it was a it was a makeshift. Uh, it was a um, it wasn't the off season we're used to having last winter. Um, just in terms of what we need to do, um, we will be all through it um, in terms of heavy lifting and heavy running. Um, but we got we got to get more physical. We got to be more physical on the offensive line and the defensive line. Um, I think that's a big part of it. Skill development is a big part of who I think we are. Um, we've got a, our skill development, whether it's running back, um, it's DB um, skill development. We've got to improve, and then we got to we got to recruit. And so the guys that come in have got to be, um, you know, the guys. Uh, some of them are going to be ready to play right now. To be real frank with you, and then some of them are. Uh, you know, I think I'll have bright futures, but I think that's the biggest key is we got to get bigger and we got to get stronger. We got to be more physical, in my opinion, on both sides of the ball. Is there a question? Yeah. I mean, I I don't disagree with you. Yeah, I I'd probably one of our our uh, poorer games tackling. And uh, I think that that has something to do with it. Um, you know, we got a lot of guys out. Um, that's not an excuse. That's a, that's a legit um, could not sub guys out. I think we got tired at some certain spots, spots and, and we didn't tackle very good in the second half. Um, I thought we tackled well most of the year, but it wasn't real good today. Yeah, I was up. Yep. 100%. Yep, 100%. Coach, you go up 14 nothing, and Texas kind of responds. Did they make an adjustment, or was it just plays that they made and they did that? I think they, they made plays. Um, they, uh, you know, Patterson says all the time 14 nothing lead is one of the worst leads you could ever have. Um, because I think sometimes the complacency sets in, and I'm not sure if it did, but uh, it apparently may have. Um, but they made plays to get right back in the game. They're they're a good team, and you know they hit some shots on us, got them right back in it. For you, um, I know it'd be tough to go through every single fourth down. But were you a little bit, maybe more aggressive than you would be in a usual game because you treated, as we said, you felt on Monday like a bowling? Well. No, that's that's a really good question. Um, not so much because it was a bowl game, but some of the early fourth downs were right on the field goal line uh, for Trey. Um, it was also a feeling that we needed touchdowns, and I wanted to be aggressive. Um, didn't, uh, and I thought that the best the best option um, is to go for it on fourth down with our offense versus a fake field goal or fake pun or something like that. And they were manageable fourth downs. They they were and. Um, Converted one or two. I, I don't know. I don't have stats on me, but um, obviously missed one. The, the key miss was 28-21 when we missed the one. I just thought we needed a touchdown at that point to continue to stay on track. Did the elements uh, ever play a part in terms of maybe running Trey out there or not running him out there? Did the game, maybe when the rain was Trey, oh, Trey Wolf? Yeah, when the rain no. was harder. Or maybe no. Not really. It was more range and the dampness and where we thought his real range was with the dampness of the air and the, and the, and the rain. I know the game just ended, but when you reflect back on this year, what are you going to remember? Oh, I'll remember Broderick Washington. I remember um, Jordan Brooks changing his body, buying into Dave Scholes and buying into Keith Patterson. 
Um, what a tremendous season he had individually. I'll, I'll remember all Doug Coleman's interceptions, uh, those three senior offensive linemen who are gritty and tough. Um, and, uh, you know, those three guys are going somewhere in life. Um, I respect those guys. Um, obviously, you're going to remember the close losses. And um, we have got to get this program past close losses. Um, there's no, no question about that. Um, that won't be acceptable by me, uh, first and foremost. But we've got to get past that point. And so I think that that plays a part as you, you know, you will, as we at one point will, look back on the season. Yeah, here coming up. Yeah, you're correct. Shoulder. Yeah, he's got a labrum. Um, and what is, what is Jeff Bates, Kevin Rambo out this past month? His knee. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I don't think he's going to require surgery. Yeah. 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 Taylor, it's a, it's a great question, and you noticed that, and I'm sure a lot of other people did, but what I noticed is him playing the last two weeks um, with this injury um, and um, getting told that it's 50-50, have surgery right now or risk it and keep playing. And the guy uh, played against TCU in Kansas State. He played lights out against K-State. Um, that's what I'll remember and respect. So he was playing the same way. 100 percent he was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Sir Roderick plays with a lot of toughness and guts and grit. Um, high character kid. I think you already know the answer to that question. He's banged up pretty good. Do you change the offense at all to maybe more passes to allow him to not take as many hits on the ball? Or is it uh, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do what we do. I mean, we still need to hand it to him. Um, you can't just sit there and drop back all day. Um, but um, you know, I thought. I thought he, uh, I thought he competed. Jax Welch came in and competed, um, made a key catch, and, and uh, gained a first down on one snap. Matt, uh, Keyshawn Carter had by far his biggest game that he's had here in two years. What was it that allowed him to do that today? You know, Keyshawn, we had to move him into the slot because um, rigged in another guy that didn't make the trip. We were out. Um, two running backs, a slot receiver, and an outside receiver on offense. And, um, and we had to move him into the slot. He, you know, he played there, Don, in the spring, and then we moved him back outside. Um, just uh, had opportunities and made plays, and kind of some of the reads just went to him. And um, he caught the ball, competitive catches, tight tight windows, um, wet ball. And I thought Keyshawn, as well as Easy, I thought Easy played a great game. Those two guys got real bright futures. I think the biggest thing it does, Don, is it gives you confidence going into the offseason. I think it solidifies that you can play at this level. Uh, I think every competitor um, needs validation um, at times, and it's uh, based on your performance, and this is a performance that ought to validate Keyshawn's talent and his ability, and uh, I thought he played well out there today. No, uh, it was uh, them taking away the slant balls and the speed out underneath. So, following up on that, but the ball to Keyshawn, fourth and four from the 18, did you want to see that ball thrown to the end zone? At that it's the same thing I just answered, Don. I mean, the three underneath routes were covered and the ball, no, I, I mean, Jet doesn't want to throw it out of bounds. He didn't do that on purpose. I mean, that was the last read in the in the progression for Jet. Say, can you say it again? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow. I mean, it's already been starting to be attacked in terms of recruiting. You know, your off season, um, real short uh, time with our players, and then they're obviously off for finals and a break, and then January fifteenth. Here we go. But I mean, coaches will be out. Uh, you know, starting next Monday, recruiting. Do you ever have time for reflection, or is it just kind of a three sixty five? 
No, I think it's important to time to take time to reflect. Uh, I think that's um, healthy. You have to know uh, what worked, what you know, where your struggles are. I think we already know some of the answers um, in both that we did well and that we struggled with. But I think it's always important to uh, to take time and reflect. And you know, over the next few weeks, we'll do that as a staff and uh, you know, as a program. Oh, I don't think there's a single biggest thing. I think there's the the hope is the fight that these kids continue to play with, you know, down the stretch. Um, when you lose a goal of competing for a Big 12 championship um, and you're fighting, uh, I thought our kids showed tremendous grit and fight, um, and you see signs of it turning. But, um, you know, the accountability, we got to have player-led leadership behind closed doors in a locker room and a weight room. Um, those things are huge. The work ethic that's got to be brought in, and then you continue to add uh, through recruiting. I mean, it's recruit and develop. That's the end of, end of the story. Yeah, you saw it, maybe Iowa State game kind of on, or is that mid-October on? You know, Don, the thing that I respect about Eric is Eric's the guy that hadn't he didn't tap out one time in spring. You know, you start to see a, a, a zebra don't change his stripes. That guy didn't tap out one time in the spring. The guy grinded all spring, all training camp. Uh, he never asked Falani to come out, um, and, and he made competitive catches scrimmage one in the sp um, to the spring game to, to August. And you're sitting there, you're watching a redshirt freshman compete in a number two role. And you're like, there's, there's greatness ahead for this kid. And I think we all felt that. And um, he kind of confirmed it the last you know, couple months of the season that that, that kid's going to, he'll be one of the better wideouts around here. How did Jeff uh, develop, do you think, as a, as a starting I think, yeah, I think, first of all, David Yost did a nice job with him. and. You know, that's a, a young man that has played some in, um, you know, the years past and um, came out of August, obviously wasn't uh, the starter in, in a backup role, and sometimes that can be hard. And credit goes to Jet, and the credit goes to David Yost. And I thought Jeff – Jet played uh, – he played well down the stretch. I mean, um, you know, not perfect by any means, uh, but none of us – none of us did. But uh, he's a competitive kid. A great demeanor about himself. I think that our players believe in him. Coach, I think you have four metrics for him for a moment. I think you have card number uh, 17, Kevin. How many more? How many more? Well, they let us get to 25. So I don't, we'll see where those numbers are. I mean, we only get 25. So.